Hi fishy folks and happy Sunday fun day to you. Guys, before we get started with the video, do me a favor, smash that uh, subscribe button. Go ahead and gently caress the notification bell, just like a baby's back, caress the notification bell. And when we're done, check out michaelsfishroom.com for some pretty cool guppies and plecos. So if you watch my channel at all, you know I've been in Japan for the last two weeks. I've done a couple tours. I have another uh, tour coming of a special species only shop not arowana because I did that already. Uh, link to that video up here in the description somewhere in this this general area you'll see it. Um, anyway, so I was gone for about two weeks and so my middle son, Andrew, uh, went ahead and fed my fish room. He was supposed to feed the whole fish room like three or four times and feed Chewy uh, every day. Like three or four pellets every day. That's all he was supposed to do. Pretty sure he went overboard with feeding Chewy, and I'll show you why in a little while. But uh, other, than, other than missing a whole species in one tank, I don't know that he did anything wrong. I think he did a great job, actually. So, was down here early this morning. It's daylight savings time here today in the United States. If you don't know what that is, that means we change the clocks twice a year because we're stupid. Um, and... Uh, so I was up a little earlier than I wanted to, but I did sleep really well, which is nice because I was exhausted. I was up for about 20, or I was traveling for about 25 hours. Uh, I left Japan Saturday morning and I got to the United States Saturday morning after flying for 12 hours. And then I had another uh, three hour flight from Dallas to New Jersey. Anyway, enough about me. Let's take a look at the fish room, all right? Grab a beverage. I'm gonna go with the water. You guys can do what you want and a snack. I don't have any snacks down here. Um, we already talked about the honey um, trail mix from Walmart, love that stuff. But uh, perhaps some cheese popcorn. I like the cheese popcorn too, all right? So cheese popcorn and water for me, whatever you guys want, get comfortable. It's gonna be a long one, stand by. All right, fishy folks, we'll start with a tour of the workbench, which I spent about a half hour cleaning up. So there's my new heater. I have to uh, plumb it. I have some plumbing parts. And uh, that yellow tape is tape you need to put on the threads for a gas line. So I gotta figure out if I have enough parts to do to uh, install it or do I need to go to Home Depot and buy the right stuff. Here's a box that Greg from my aquarium box gave me at uh, the Aquatic Experience. I haven't opened it yet. There's my new label maker and box of samples when you buy fish. Uh, I throw in some food samples from supercichlids.com. Check out supercichlids.com and use promo code SHIP for free for free shipping. Just some other stuff in the fish room. I swear I pack all my food. There's some extra. Pack all my food, sorry. Pack all my fish. There's some extra food from Fancy Tail Aquatics I haven't tried yet. Some uh, special food from Ocean Nutrition I haven't tried yet, but. Just to give you an example, there's where I pack all my fish. So usually, the, obviously the heater's not here and this box isn't here and there are some of my shipping supplies. The plan uh, this winter, probably over Christmas break or maybe Thanksgiving break is to put a big shelf here. I really wanna leave the um, insulation up, but I don't think I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to. So <clears throat> while we're looking, here's my auto water change system. There's the, the filters. And uh, right there is the uh, mixing valve. So, all right, let's get started looking at tanks. Who should we start with first? Chewy? Okay. So here's Chewy, my super red dragon flower horn that I got from Aqua Craze. You can see how big his cock is. It's growing really nice. And I know other flower horns have cock envy and that's okay. Um, I feed primarily Excalibur food and some other uh, foods from Excalibur for him but you know he does get frozen blood worms and uh, hey if you're a flower horn guy or gal for that matter um, do your flower horns eat snails because there was a few snails in here that he devoured and I, I drop a couple in every now and again but I don't know if it's good or bad for him so so here's the issue with this tank you can see this ginormous pile of detritus and there's definitely uneaten food in there so and these filters need to be cleaned which may or may not be on the agenda for today um, 
but uh, I think my son overfed Chewy, which I guess isn't a, a huge deal. You know, 75 gallon tank, this flower horn, auto water change system. So I'm sure the water quality is fine, but I will be uh, actually cleaning out this tank when we're done. And uh, you can see I labeled this with Excalibur for him so he knew what to feed. Now, I'm gonna show you uh, Han and Leia. Also, I put cichlid pellets. Um, I feed them primarily these cichlid pellets from Northfin. Um, obviously, I feed some other things like these predator sticks they've started to like. I'm a little disappointed they don't eat the Crow Pro. Uh, it might be too big for them. I'm not really sure. Crow Pro stinks. If you've never gotten it, it really stinks, which is great for the fish because they'll, they'll you know devour it. But um, What else do I feed Han and Leia my pair of Oscars, Tiger Oscars. This this tank also a little bit overfed. I did I did actually clean a little bit out of this tank last night. Um, but And I have a uh, hang on back filter, which I will show you right there. Just one I had lying around to help clean up, clean up some of the moment. You can see some floating uneaten food in the tank, which isn't good. So I'll be cleaning that up uh, today for sure. What was I saying about food? Oh, I also feed these guys uh, these cichlid um, Omni Bites, Omni Pellets from Ocean Nutrition. I really like these, and there's the veggie ones. I like those as well. But uh, they're doing well. When I came home, I couldn't find Leia. She's the albino, the smaller of the two. You can see her just chilling in the cave. But I didn't see her in the cave, and it's I did smell a little dead fish down here, which sometimes happens in a fish room I guess so I thought maybe she jumped out but I couldn't find her I was kind of upset I moved the cave a couple times she was just hiding up in the cave um, and the dead fish smell <laughs> was um, I cleaned the moss the moss the floss out of that filter uh, and I left it in a bucket instead of disposing of it so you could imagine it stunk pretty good down here but we've since taken care of those all right guys, here are the uh, glass belly guppies. I got these, um, I won them at an auction from Karen Haas. Uh, I don't remember when, but they are they have been breeding like crazy. I have pictures, I just haven't put them on the website. I don't think I put them on the website yet, michaelsfishroom.com. But I know I have really good pictures of them, so I should be putting them on the website any minute, which I've said about 100 times now. No time though. Uh, in this tank, we have half black females, and I'm sure there's some fry if we look hard enough. At least I hope there's. Oh, yeah, there's one. There's one, there's probably 10. No, there's actually two different batches at least because I see a really tiny one over there, and then that bigger one that we saw. So they're going out nice. Here are some of my pride and joy guppies, if you will. These are the. Um, See, I should have labeled all these. These are the Platinum Red Dragon Mosaics. These won second place at the Gupping Competition at the Keystone Clash. And uh, even the females have some really nice tails. They, uh, they don't quite have Dumbo ears, although some of the, the dorsals on these guys are getting quite big like this one. Of course, it's not standing still. Um, and also in this tank, we have some albino bristlenose grow outs, also available at michaelsfishroom.com. You can see some in the front, some chill in the back. Let me tell you about this tank, about these bristlenose though, guys. So I breed for profit, which means the whole reason for the YouTube channel is to promote my website so you guys go buy fish so I can make money. Cha-ching! Um, but this tank is a perfect like breeding setup but it is a pain in the behind to catch uh, plecos when you wanna sell them. So I gotta maybe figure something out. <laughs> All right, let's move up to this dirty tank. Uh, this is Bruce, one of my bettas. There he is. Hey Bruce, what's up buddy? He's not for sale. Uh, he's just living in the fish room, loving life. But this betta is for sale. This one is from uh, New Jersey Betta Hatchery. Susie Graham is the owner and breeder. She's won multiple awards at the International Betta Congress this year. Fantastic breeder. Um, this is one of the ones I got when I was at the Keystone Clash to sell for her. And I uh, this one I decided to keep to sell on the website. So he's on the website now. If you wanna go take a look, michaelsfishroom.com. Um, I think shipping 
I forget how much he is. Check out the website. But there's also some ginormous snails in here and a couple of calico plecos, a breeding trio, I hope. There's one. I don't know if you can see him hanging out on the glass back there. No, won't focus. But he's back there, trust me. But there are three plecos in here. All right, lemon blue eye plecos. These were born actually at my when I was in Japan the last time in August. So let's say around August 1st or 2nd. So what are these, three months old? August, August, September, October. Yeah, these are like three months old. Uh, and there are the parents. These are for sale on the website. Albino blue eye. These aren't regular albinos. They're not. Uh, did I say albino blue eye? Wow. I meant lemon blue eye. Holy crap. They're lemon blue eyes. So this is their normal color. If they were albino, they'd have red eyes. Ha ha. Anyway. Um... These guys are for sale. These are, you know, pretty hardy, pretty prolific, and do a great job cleaning the tank. This tank's actually quite clean. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, lots of snails, a couple of snassins in there doing their job, but I don't know if I've ever showed you this. This is a wood stand for checking, um, uh, eight, if you use the API master test kit, you lay this flat, you put the, uh, the tubes in here, you put the color card behind it in the stand, and you know, you check your colors. And this was made by, a, by Anil, and actually sent to me from um, a friend of mine. I don't know if she wants me to say her name, so I won't say it, but <clears throat> uh, she sent it to me as a gift. I don't test water, and I don't even have an API test kit anymore that's um, actually hasn't expired, so I just keep it as decoration. Moving along, here's where my heater's gonna go. See, I have it mounted, I have a gas line, but yeah. Here's an empty tank, still haven't done anything with it. We'll move on. Here are some mutts that were sent to me from uh, uh, Mike at Mile High Plecos. And uh, just let them grow out, see what they do. They've been in, you know, in quarantine now for a couple months, so these might be part of the mutt package if you want some mutts. Over here, looks like there's nothing in this tank there was a black panda female just one waiting for her to drop fry and then you know we raise the fry in here and have two tanks full because they're the best seller on the website but i don't i haven't seen her i haven't really looked either in the weeds she might be in there sleeping or uh um, dropping fry so i'll have to check it out not overly concerned and i'll tell you why in a second but here are the Jade Head Mosaics. Uh, this is a tank pretty much of females that drop fry. And I put the males in an all male guppy tank, let them grow out. You can see there's all kinds of fry in different, different size females. These guys aren't even on the website. Um, I don't know why, probably just because I'm a lazy guy. All right, I'm gonna grab the chair and scoot to make it easier to see. Okay. This tank over here has some uh, mutts from outside just growing out. I had a bunch of different tubs outside with different strains in it and it didn't really go well for me this year. I'm actually pretty disappointed and uh, it kind of lost all my motivation for tubbing outside. So I gotta see what I wanna do next year. But anyway, these guys will turn out to be part of the mutt program. Uh, love the mutts. Don't really remember what they were. I think they were the I don't know. I don't really know what they were. So, just mutts growing out. Uh, there's some babies in there. There's some juveniles. All right, this tank is the Black Panda. Oh, you can see the reflection of my pajamas. Look, these are the pajamas I'm wearing. Anyway, uh, these are the Black Panda guppies. And I had a bunch of babies before I left. I'm just waiting, them, waiting for them to grow big enough to sex them. I can probably sex them about 60, 70% sure but you know obviously i don't want to send a trio of three females or three males so uh, i want to get the sex right before i send them i know i have people on the waiting list for them uh, speaking of shipping fish i had planned to ship 
a bunch of fish tomorrow, but I realized I got home yesterday and the first thing I did was feed all the fish. And uh, so now I probably won't ship all these guys, all my orders out going until next Monday so I can fast them properly and have enough time to box them and stuff. All right, guys, here is another tank. I put a female, a couple females in here. Actually, I think I just put that one female in here and uh, she had babies and I don't really remember which strain she was. I know that sounds kind of funny, but I didn't label it and I thought I could just tell by the, the guppy what it was and now I can't because I don't really know what female that is. Even though she's huge, she is ginormous. She's like the Godzilla of the guppy world. She might as well be the size of an arowana or something. Anyway, uh, but here's what the males look like. That one actually, I thought that one looked like the back was jacked up, but it's not. It's just... Yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, there's the guppies. I don't remember what they are, I suck. All right, moving right along. This is a all male guppy tank with red cobras, the jade head males, and black Moscow guppies. Now, I have other, I had another male guppy tank, which I'll show you in a little while. Um, no aggression in this tank, but the other tank I've lost quite a few males. I don't know what happened to them. So we'll, we'll show that to you in a minute, but basically I separate the females and males in a couple different strains and it helps each sex grow faster and bigger. Um, I have no scientific proof as to why. I believe it's the hormones in the water, but again, no scientific proof, just a dumb guy with a camera and a fish room. So pretty simple breeding tank, a uh, uh, couple of floating plants, and this one has a box filter because there should be no fry in there. I like sponge filters with fries, with frying it. Um, let me rephrase that. I like fry tanks with sponge filters, and that's because they can go ahead and nibble on the, the, the detritus and uh, microfilm on the sponge filter all day long. They can just graze and get fat and happy. Here's an empty tank with some moss in it that is gonna dry out soon. Here's a breeding tank of cobra females. Um, and of course I just said that comment about sponge filters and I realized there's a corner box filter in here. Um, so basically I drop, uh, I have a couple different tanks of cobra females because they drop different color fry and I try to separate the fry quickly. Um, but Cobras, I mean, these are pretty prolific breeders and uh, I had quite a few of them, so that's why I have so many tanks of them, but there's another tank as well. The difference between these two tanks, it's a little experiment I'm running actually, is this tank over here has a heater, this tank doesn't. And so essentially they're the same tank, everything's the same in them, except the heater, right? So I wanna see if my theory of getting more males out of a tank with a heater or warmer water actually is true. I know it's true for me, but this is sort of like more of an official experiment. And so far it's true. I definitely get more males out of this tank than I do this tank, so. Um, all right, we're just gonna scoot down the bottom because I'm on the chair. So stand by while I roll over here and then turn to get a good angle. There we go. So these are, um, I don't know. I don't know what these are. No, I'm just kidding. These are mutts. They're not really mutts. They, I mean, the mothers were mutts, but the the babies seem to breed true like this, which is now that I'm thinking is like that other tank down there that I didn't know what it was. Maybe I dropped a female in there to see if they would breed true. That's what I'm beginning to think I did, but I must sound like a dummy to you guys. It's just the fact of life, like, that's just how it is, right? You know, I tell it how it is. If I screw up, I tell you I screw up. If I do something good, I tell you I do something good, so. A couple guys have said, just label all your tanks, and I have a label maker now down here in the fish room. I gotta do that. It's just time. Time is like, I just don't have it. Anyway. So, these guys I got from uh, a subscriber of mine. Um, the first time she sent me some fish. Oh, hi, Andy. That's Indy. Um, the first time she sent me some fish, 
just to send me fish. She wants to know if I wanted them, and I uh, sure, I took them. And now when she has extra, obviously, uh, I don't want her losing money. And she suggested, you know, if I could just pay for the shipping cost and all that stuff and a little money for gas. So that's what I do. So when she has extra fish, she, she we, we talk, and boom, she sends me fish. And uh, I sell some of them, and some of them I don't. All right, these guys are the most bestest fish in the fish room. These are the um, Rainbow Dragon Mosaics. Dumbo Rainbow Dragon Mosaics. Rainbow Dragon Dumbo Mosaics. One of those name combinations. And just look at how beautiful they are. They're available on the website in pairs and trios. And uh, these are the ones that won first, pro first prize. Wow. These are the ones that won first place in the Guppy competition at the Keystone Clash. And um, they are just spectacular. Very hardy, very prolific. Bless you, Indy. And um, if you want them, check out michaelsfishroom.com. Pairs and trios are available. Now, here's something that I'm a little disappointed at. I took this ginormous piece of pothos and put it in here to help grow. And you can see there are roots coming off. But a lot of the leaves have died. But these are new leaves now that I'm looking, so that's pretty good. So I probably got to trim it um, or pull all the dead off and see what I can get to grow. Because there's a new leaf on the end. Anyway, this is an empty tank. You can see there's a bag of uh, crushed coral in here. I was, you know, trying to plan th this bottom row. And I was going to take this tank and drill it. And then take, put a 10-gallon there because that's what fits there. And drill that. And then plumb these guys and have two more tanks. But... Again, time got the better of me. All right, let's look at these fishies, guys. I had a subscriber that said, Mike, I have a hundred uh, guppies outside in one of my ponds, and I don't want them. Can you come get them? And so I came and got them. And um, then she said, oh, I caught some more, and she dropped them off on my porch. And these are those. So there was a ton of fry. Not too many adults, but a ton of fry. And... Um, I just, I'm just letting them grow out, and they'll be part of the mutt program. But to be honest, I didn't know what I was going to get out of these guys. It looks like there's some endler crosses in there. Um, I think there were probably some of those red, white, and blue American guppies I had in here. Or maybe even the American koi guppies I must have had in here as well, because I see some of those. But um, you can see some endler. Like, that one looks kind of like an endler some endler crosses. So these will be part of the mutt program. Uh, I hope to be shipping until at least Thanksgiving, but of course the weather is one of those things that uh, we have to worry about. Um, and I have an order of heat packs coming in. I have all the styrofoam I need, but for some dumb reason, I forgot to order heat packs. So I have enough heat packs for my orders that have to go out uh, next week, but I don't want to run out in case I have more orders. All right. Moving on, yellow cobras. Just a yellow cobra uh, grow out tank. There's both silver and gold body yellow cobras in here. Um, so when you buy a pair, I try to try to give you both the same silver and gold body. I don't know how that happened, um, but it did. So I'm trying to look. There were a ton of fry when I left. I don't see a ton of fry, but you know it's possible they got hungry and nibbled on some fry. Guys, these are also uh, mutts. They were labeled as um, something blue at my local fish store, but they really didn't seem like they were going to breed true. And uh, so I just bought a bunch to add to the mutt program, add some genetics to the mutt program. So there, there were females in here. I'm sure they're just hiding in the weeds and I can't see them. But again, got to take a look at the tanks and see what's going on. All right, moving on. This is uh, another albino uh, pleco breeding group and some beautiful guppies I got from uh, a friend of mine, a local breeder. I mean, he's not that local, but he's out in Western Pennsylvania um, that he sent me. And uh, he drives, you know, some piece of crap car that uh, he's always making fun of Subaru, so haha. -ha. But look how stunning they are. They are actually fantastic. So we're breeding them. Gonna get a colony big enough, hopefully, uh, in the spring. And uh, we'll have them up for sale on the website. There's also a ton of duckweed in this tank, which I just realized. 
the original Mutt Guppy tank. Nothing really special here. Dropped the Black Moscow with a silver belly I didn't want to want to breed. There's like a Japanese blue. You know, you just I just drop a bunch of different fish and see what we get. And boom, another Mutt Guppy tank. The second original Mutt Guppy. Actually, this is the original Mutt Guppy tank. That's not the original. Anyway. Nothing really to say about the mutts. You know I love the mutts. You guys love the mutts. They are really popular. They're a great way to get into fancy guppies if you're not looking to breed, you know, super fancy and sell them. Uh, if you buy guppies at one of the big box stores and they all die or they all look like crap, you're going to spend a little bit more money with me, but you know they'll be hardy and you know they'll last. So, all right. Black Moscow females with some fry. Nothing really special here. Black Moscow females look like half black guppies. Here is a breeding colony of albino bristlenose plecos. I have two and uh, still waiting on fry. These guys are in the caves all the time, but I haven't seen fry. I really expected I'd have fry when I got back from Japan and I don't. So it's time to go on full breeding mode in this tank. Here's a tank with calico plecos, also no action so far. Um, you can see one in the back. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus. There we go. See him just chilling. But uh, yeah, no action here. Little surprised. All right, fishy folks. This is something that I'm concerned about. So you can see there's one guppy. These are the, that's the male to what the females down here look like, which is, I believe, the same female down there now. And one betta. This betta was given to us at the Keystone Clash for my youngest son, Lucas. And he has not done what he's supposed to do to get a tank in his room with either guppies or uh, this betta. So uh, he's just living in my fish room for now, but that's a whole nother story. When I left, I was pretty sure there was more than one guppy in here, and now there's only one. And I don't see any bodies. And there aren't that many snails, so I'm a little concerned that that betta has, has eaten guppies, or at least killed them, and the snails ate them. So I don't know what I'm gonna do, because I don't really have another spot for that betta. Actually, I kinda do now that I think about it, but I was kinda hoping, uh, Lucas would have his stuff together and I can put him in Lucas's room. But anyway, uh, good looking betta. Not a show quality betta, for sure, but... And there's that spot on his head. I don't know what that is. I gotta check that out, so... We might be changing this up when we're done, folks. Alright, there's my medals from the Keystone Clash. So this is the tank that busted a seam before I left for Japan and I just didn't have time to change it and so I've just let it sit at half full and it's not leaking. So I don't know if the leak is up high or the pressure from the water has made it, um, you know, makes it leak when it's full. But this has seemed to work out, you know, I got lots of water going in it in water change time. So this one has calico, grow out calico plecos and uh, some guppies that are probably muck guppies by now because I don't know what they are. All right, guys, this tank is also an anomaly. This, these are just regular uh, albino, I'm sorry, regular bristlenose plecos, but this tank had the double sword, Japanese blue double sword tails that I got from um, Mark De Niro's shop. I can't remember the name right now, Natural Pet. Uh, before I left, I noticed one of the males seemed to be missing his tail, and I'm like, that's really weird. And now they're they're all gone. I have seen, uh, yesterday I did pull out some remnants of guppy, so I don't know what happened. I don't know if it's a water quality thing. I don't know if it's an acclim acclimation thing, but uh, I'm pretty disappointed because they were pretty cool fish, and from what I know, they're all gone. I don't blame uh, the fish store at all because uh, they lasted for at least a week in my tank, no problem. So, um, you know, these things happen in the fish room. It's a loss. It's a loss for me because uh, I really like the Japanese blues, you know, going to Japan all the time, having many friends there, being able to say I have Japanese, Japanese fish is pretty cool. So, but uh, again, regular bristlenose grow outs, pretty nice bristlenose, got that little stripe on the white tail. 
So hopefully after uh, the winter, when the spring comes along, these will be big enough to sell. Um, these were, <laughs> there's a long story with this tank, which I tell a lot, but real quick, uh, there was a female guppy in here that I hadn't seen after I cleaned uh, all the guppies out and she dropped fry and these are the fry. Uh, and then obviously more, more fry were born, males and females. And I'm just letting these grow out and see what they look like. Cause I don't know what they are. All right, guys, moving on. These are, um, super red bristlenose plecos babies once these are big enough i will certainly be selling them i have an order already uh unfortunately ashley if you're watching shoot me an email and let's figure out what you want to do if you want to wait till these are big enough or i can give you a refund because these are not going to be big enough to sell this before the winter comes so up to you let me know what you want to do i'll send you another email uh we talked about these guys all right up top you know, guys, I gotta change my battery, so this is a good place to stop and change the battery. All right, guys, these are the German Half Blacks. Uh, these were really prolific for me, and I sold the bunch and I oversold them, and that female is jacked up. So I might be losing this strain. I know I owe a pair to a customer, probably for six months now. He basically said, I don't care, whenever they're ready, let me know. So I don't know if they're gonna be ready. I gotta try to get some more stock. All right, these, I forgot what these are called. I got these from my local fish store. One of uh, one of his customers, or maybe his cousin breeds these, so he sells them. And uh, I'm gonna be power fitting these over the winter, getting a bunch ready to sell. Pretty nice looking guppy. I think he called them red flame tails. I gotta look and see if there's a better name for them, but we'll see. Here are some disappointing guppies I bought from Facebook. No breeding, lost the mail. These were like half black blue or something or blue green, I don't know what the hell they were, but they're nothing. All right, half black reds sold, I think four pairs last night, somebody bought. Thank you very much. They'll be shipping next Monday. Uh, pretty prolific, pretty hardy. Looking forward to these guys growing. All right, Jarwi Lazulis. These I got at a local auction. I think the last Keystone Clash I bought them. And they're pretty good sellers. Unfortunately, I had lost the colony and uh, luckily I got some back from my good friend, Karen Haas. Thank you so much, Karen. They drop fry rather quickly. You can see there's quite a few youngins in there. And uh, as soon as these guys are big enough to sex, we'll be selling them. Here's a mutt guppy tank. These mutts were from outside. These were actual mutts. I already sold a couple of nice ones out of here. A jar we lazuli got in here and I'm leaving them in just to see what the fry look like. Ah, uh, mutt guppy tank, blue mutts. These used to be blue diamonds. Were they? Yeah, these used to be the blue diamonds. But uh, we lost the colors. I sold some really nice ones and uh, they started growing a little bit red in the tail. And that's what happens with these guppies. So, yep, that's that. All right. These are the Japanese blues that I had. You can see there's a couple that are growing real nice. I gotta start separating again. And there's a couple that Look like some reds coming out. I haven't been diligent with pulling the reds out. So red being the dominant color has started to come out in the guppies. Um, I had a customer ask me if I have any Japanese blues lower sore tails without lower sore tails. This is what they look like. If you want them, email me. We'll work something out. Half blacks, uh, just a colony growing out. Really not a big seller on the website. Not sure I'm gonna keep them. Uh, they may just go into the mutt guppy tank so I can I can change I can use a space for something else the plan is over the winter to sort of organize and uh, label and get everything you know to a better breeding process and better filming process for you guys but we'll see what happens with these guys 
Tanaka Maple Leafs. Got these also at the same time as I got the Jarry Lazulis from the same breeder. Um, really nice little guppy, colorful. Look like they have a double sore tail sometimes, just because uh, there's pigment in the top and the bottom of the tail. Really hardy, really prolific. Good looking little guppy, especially if you have like a little nano tank, these would be great. They look great against the green of the moss and other plants. Check them out, michaelsfishroom.com. <sighs> These are American Purple Deltas that seem to be very strange. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Mutt guppies from outside, probably uh, the best looking mutts that I've had in, for a while. Um, you can see there's a nice red cobra that has led its traits, so. Uh, nebula steel guppies. Steel nebula guppies. I don't know what you want to call them. Nebula steel, steel nebula. Not really focusing either. Sorry, guys. Trying to fix it. Stand by. Um, just building this colony up as best as I can. I know once I put them on the website, they will go pretty quickly. So you can see there's, I don't know, five or six males in there. Seven or eight females. So letting the colony grow. And then we'll drop them on the website and hopefully sell them. More purple Delta guppies. These are the ones I got from uh, Daniel Anderson, who has dropped off the face of the earth. I haven't heard from him in months. But uh, yeah, these aren't really breeding true either. So we drop these uh, into mutt bags as well, especially if somebody asks for purple or yellow. I mean, if that is gorgeous. Purple and yellow, fantastic, but not breeding true. Here's the male guppy tank that had one of almost every male in the fish room. And now there's only a Tanaka Maple Leaf in this uh, American Koi guppy. I don't know where the rest are. There's no bodies, but they're gone. All right, fishy folks, this has been a really long tour. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to check out michaelsfishroom.com. Send me an email if you have any questions. Check out all my YouTube videos. Leave a comment. And, uh, you know, have a great day. Hi, fishy folks, and happy Sunday fun day to you. Guys, before we get started, just do me a favor. Smash the, uh, notification, no, 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 no. Don't smash the notification bell. What you want to do is think before you open your mouth. So I was gone for two weeks. I already said this. What the? <clears throat> These guys actually even aren't on the website. Even aren't even aren't on the website. That's not English, dummy. Um, I had a bunch of different mutts, and I I was hoping I would get. I hope. I, I have a bunch of different. I have. Jesus Christmas.